All right, we've got this late model 5.7 Durango that's been dropped off last night. We're getting ready to strap it down to the dyno. We're finishing up our air intake for it. It's also going to fit the Grand Cherokee 5.7. So the plan is to strap it down, make two to three runs stock, swap out the JLT, make two to three runs, compare the change. One last thing before we get started is we're going to address the comments that are coming is hood up, hood down dyno testing. A typical dyno run happens in fourth, fifth, or sixth gear and is about 60 to 100, and, as high as 150 miles an hour. And these dyno fans don't simulate that kind of airflow. So all testing will and should be done hood up. And we'll explain that as well. Let's get started. Okay, it's 80 degrees in the shop right now. 50% humidity. We'll take a look at this. Stock air box and the inlet air temperature is 90 degrees. That's 10 degrees difference with the hood up. So the hood up is not necessarily getting you cooler temperatures or anything better than what this car would see above 100 miles an hour. You should see these exact temperatures with the hood closed going down the road at 100 plus miles an hour. So hood up, hood down is just a fair test for both sides. Okay, so here's the stock run, and you can see the coolant temp, which the other ones were, I can show you, are 196. Air inlet temp is 93. We're still uh, low 80s, so about a 10 degree temperature differential uh, on the inlet air temp, even with the hood up. Um, and they were made to run at uh, just under 200 degrees. So we're gonna shoot for that when we run the JLT. got the runs with the JLT. We're looking at same temps, 199 to 201 on the coolant temp, which is right where we had it with the other one. So that's real important when you're doing testing is to have all your conditions be the same. All right, well, we made two to three back-to-back -back runs in each configuration, stock airbox and JLT, all while monitoring coolant temps and keeping everything the same. All uh, runs were started in the 185 degree temperature range and ended up in the 200 to 203 range by the, by the uh, second and third pull. Uh, let's take a look at the stock runs. So we got two runs back-to-back pretty consistent but you can see in the middle here it looks like we maybe had a little bit of heat and the car possibly pulled a little timing um, we went ahead and made a third run so we can see that uh, the green runs about the average 
317 and 357 on torque. So good numbers, very good average numbers, but I don't like to play any games. I like to compare the best, even though that, that first red run is the first run of the day. The car sat here overnight, so everything was cool. That is giving that uh, stock air box a major benefit. But let's go ahead and remove everything here. We swapped out the JLT. And made three runs. Again, very consistent. You can see where heat does play a role and you're gonna lose you know, some single digit horsepower and torque gains, but this is the averages you can see. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I wanna compare the best JLT to the best stock air box. I'm not gonna do the worst stock air box versus the best JLT. Pay attention out there, you're gonna see people that do that, but here we go. Best JLT versus the best stock air box. Peak numbers up here, you're looking at uh, 317 to 327. Uh, so you're looking at 10 horsepower, uh, seven foot-pounds of torque. But throughout the whole RPM range, you're looking at eight to 10 horsepower, even upwards of 11, 12 horsepower and foot-pounds of torque gain from the JLT over the stock air box. Now this is the best of the best. Let's go ahead and also compare the second runs. Here we got the same thing. 10, 11 horsepower, 10 foot-pounds of torque peak numbers, but again, we're gaining, uh, we got two, 282 to 291. You're looking at uh, nine horsepower and 11 foot-pounds of torque. Same thing though, you're seeing anywhere from eight to 12 horsepower and torque, second run to second run, keeping coolant temps the same, keeping everything we can the same, the only change is the JLT. So on average, you can see about eight to 12 horsepower and torque on your 5.7 Durango and Grand Cherokee with just swapping your stock air box with a JLT.